There was a time when the Brontosaurus was known to every school child. It was the centerpiece of a World's Fair exhibit, appeared on a set of U.S. postage stamps, and was the symbol of a major oil company. Museums displayed the bones of this giant dinosaur proudly. Then suddenly, this creature disappeared. The Brontosaurus was a victim of war. A war fought over a hundred years ago between two eminent paleontologists. Edward Drinker Cope of the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences and Nathaniel Charles Marsh of Yale University had started as friends. In 1868, Cope had showed Marsh the marl pits near his home where the first complete skeleton of an American dinosaur, the Hadriosaurus, had been found. Cope had an arrangement with the pits operator to send any newly discovered fossils to him. After Marsh's visit, he was surprised, however, when his supplies suddenly dried up. Marsh had secretly bribed the owners to ship any bones they found to Yale instead. The relationship got further strained when Marsh found a huge error in Cope's work. Cope had been reconstructing the skeleton of an ancient marine reptile called the Elasmiosaurus. He had thought that it had a short neck and long tail. Marsh pointed out, however, that Cope had put the animal's head on the wrong end. Though he published a correction, the incident embarrassed Cope to no end. Their battlefield soon moved from the east coast to the newly found fossil fields of the Great West. Places like Como Bluff, Wyoming would soon yield a treasure trove of extinct beasts. In 1872, Marsh led an expedition of his students from Yale to find new western fossil quarries. That same year, Cope also headed west and soon found his own cache of prehistoric bones. This led to an unscientific competition between the two to see who could discover more species. Marsh found many of the iconic ones including the Apatiosaurus, the Stegosaurus, the Triceratops, and the Brontosaurus. Though Cope found fewer, less famous species, they were scientifically just as important. Thanks to Cope and Marsh, in just a few years the number of known extinct reptiles had jumped from a handful to over a hundred. Neither man stayed in the West, however, but retreated to their East Coast offices where they published articles that included personal attacks on each other, thinly veiled as scientific criticism. In 1890, their war, which had been so far restricted to scientific circles, made the papers. Out West, Cope and Marsh's men continued to dig up dinosaurs even as they fought, spied, and stole fossils from each other. There was even a rumor that one of Marsh's men dynamited a quarry to keep the bones from falling into Cope's hands. How did the brontosaurus get caught in the crossfire? In 1877, Marsh had announced the discovery of the Apatosaurus based on a small section of vertebrae. Later, he also found the complete skeleton of a creature he named a brontosaurus. Rushing, Marsh hadn't realized the two were actually the same. After his death, his error was found and the brontosaurus name dropped because it was a duplication. However, not only did the four brontosaurus need a name change, Marsh accidentally had given him the wrong head, too. The war eventually exhausted both Marsh and Cope's personal fortunes. Before his death, however, Cope issued one more challenge to Marsh. He donated his skull to science, daring Marsh to do the same, so that their craniums could be measured to see who was really the smarter man. Marsh declined, however, and the war ended with Cope's skull as an exhibit in his own museum. In 